Hello, I made a game called Hamlet, which is a confusing title, but it's about a village. Um, I'm gonna make this uh, little video when I show you the game, what it's like. It is, it should be said, only a game in the very broadest sense of the word. It's more a little exploratory tool where you are shown a village and you get to look around it, learn a little something about its inhabitants and so on. Anyway, let's, uh, let's show it. So here we are. Welcome to the pretty little hamlet of White Stocking Well. And here we are. This is the hamlet, the village. It's uh, randomly generated from, from drawings. Um, there are a bunch of locations here and what we can do is simply mouse over any of them to learn a small something about each place in this hamlet or village. So this is the yellow house, this is Mercy and Shirley's house. Shirley adores beekeeping. And also if you click on anything it'll give you another little snippet of text not necessarily related to the place that, uh, that you're looking at. So this is still the Yellow House. From the diary of Shirley. Shirley does live here, so that's, that's lucky. The fourth middle day of Phoenikaios. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, my uh, ancient Greek is rusty. 684. Edward came round this afternoon and we didn't stop talking for hours. This is the kind of thing I'm going for in this game. Little tiny snippets of life. We don't yet know anything about Edward or Shirley, really, except that Shirley keeps a diary. And she chatted with Edward this day. And also, she adores beekeeping. Uh, here is a monolith next to the house. An upright stone, in case we didn't know what a monolith is. Uh, uh, Thierry is often playing nearby. Thierry is probably a child, I think. There are some children in this hamlet. And there's another little uh, snippet when you click on it. Eldrild, Eldril said of this place, this stone is a nexus, a portal to a dark place. Or perhaps a gate, barring a rift through which our world could be accessed by unimaginable horrors from the beyond. We can... Uh, who's Eldril? Well, uh, he is a wizard who lives in this tower, in this case an enchanter. Every village has a tower in it, and some sort of magical person lives on the tower. So this is a half-ruined tower, an aloof in charter, sometimes called Dink the Goat. Oh, okay, that's not Eldril, okay. So I don't know who Eldril is then. Uh, Eldril must be somebody else. Uh, Dink the Goat haunts this tower. The fantastic enchanter Dink is an expert on Heron, the most beautiful. In the afternoons, they sometimes pop around Shirley's house for a nibble and a natter. So this was Shirley, and uh, sometimes the enchanter comes there to have a chat. It seems like... Uh, that's what she likes doing, chatting with people, Edward, and also uh, this guy, Dink, Dink the Goat. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to click on all these things and read them, but this is sort of the, the game, right? Like, this is all randomly generated from, you know, quite a complex array of simple uh, bits of text where, you know, there are people in this world, they have uh, professions and likes and dislikes, they're interested in certain people, they have activities they enjoy, and sometimes they do them together, sometimes they do them on their own. And then there is a lot of backstory about um, maybe the ancient myths of this world, of the gods and all that kind of stuff. Everything is generated uh, randomly. There are some rhythms to it, and I think if you, uh, you, you generate several villages, you'll start to, uh, to spot them, of course. But it's the whole the game is an exercise in creating a little a little place that has a feeling of life to it. I hope. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to click on all of these things, but you, you get the idea. You can at any time click on the button and visit a new hamlet. This is the tranquil little hamlet of Limpen Lathlos. Uh, all of the names are uh, pseudo-randomly generated. There's a big list of names, and some of them are composites of, of words. Um, 
and here we are, a different one. Some of the same elements, of course, some of the houses are the, the same and whatnot, but here we have a, a shrine to the lame god Vaimel. There is a carving on it, dim now and in the script that no one recognises. So yeah, the, the gods have been created and there are sharp shrines to them. Here's another one of those, uh, oh no, that's not a, sorry, that's a stele, a stel? I don't know how you pronounce that, so that's bad. And this commemorates the eruption at Utku. So again, there's events in the past which have been generated. Well, this whole game was inspired a little bit by watching, um, well, one aspect of this game was inspired by watching people play Dwarf Fortress, a game which I've tried to play, but frankly is a little bit beyond me. And you know, Dwarf Fortress does a lot of work to generate these worlds which are rich in myth and magic and history and um, that's all super interesting. And I wanted to do that in a very tiny little way. You know, this is a little world with a couple of gods and a wizard in a tower. And uh, this is a different world with a different god and uh, some uh, magical trees in the, in the glade. And here's one where there are ghosts living under all the bridges. That kind of thing. So anyway, uh, this is my game, Hamlet. It's available on uh, Itch.io. There's a link downstairs. And it's free, or it's pay what you want. Um, you can pay nothing if uh, if that's what you want to pay. But I'd be, uh, it would be great if you checked it out. I think you'll enjoy discovering the, the myths and the history and the people of a little tiny hamlet in the countryside in some far-off realm. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.